Okay, so this is a tutorial on how to use Easy EDA Designer to design your first printed circuit board. So you're going to go ahead and log in to Easy EDA. I've already signed in. I'm Rainbow PCB, and we're going to click on Easy EDA Designer and choose the standard edition. It's going to open up a new window here, uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. So we'll go up to File, New, Project, and we're going to call this Hello World. We'll click Save. And that's going to open us up to this page. We're going to change our title down here to Hello World. And we can change our company to our name. So this is going to be Rainbow PCB. OK, so then I can go ahead and go up to File and Save or hit Control S or Command S. Now we want to look at what we're going to be building today, and so we'll go over to our circuits and soldering lab, uh, and down here in 2, this is the one that we're following along with, uh, we're going to see that we have a circuit that we want to build here. This looks similar to the type of thing that we've built in the lab before, um, but this time we're going to create a schematic for it. Uh, and so the schematic is going to be a symbolic representation of this circuit, uh, and then we'll design a printed circuit board um, that we could build all of this into. So we're going to do some parts shopping at first. I have the components that we're going to be using here along with their part numbers. Um, and so I'm going to look for my Arduino Nano first. So I'm going to copy this number. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit Shift F on my keyboard. It's going to pull up this little search window. Up here in keywords, I can paste that number. And here where it says LCSC, you can see it found one part number. I can click this, hit the place button, click once with my mouse, move away, and then hit escape. And now I've got a little Arduino symbol here that I can hook things up to. Okay, let's keep finding some of our other parts. Here's a red LED. I'll copy its number. Hit Shift F. Paste it here into this window. And find a little LED. Click Place. I'll drop it right here, move away, hit Escape. Let's find our push button. Same thing, Shift F, paste, and search. Here it is. Replace it. Okay, move away, hit escape. 10K resistor. Same thing. We'll go find that very particular resistor. There's lots we could choose from, but this is the one that I like. And you can see I'm just kind of placing them around. I'll move these around just a little bit to kind of find a good spot for them all. Okay, and let's do our last component for this circuit, which is a 330 ohm resistor. And we can kind of drag it just here. Okay, so I'm going to take an opportunity to save that little star means that I haven't saved in a little while. So I'm going to save, and I can kind of zoom in and see what it is that I'm working here with. All right, so now we need to kind of figure out how all these components are going to get hooked up. Uh, and so we can look over here, uh, and we can begin to see some connections that need to get made. So I'm going to start with my little push button right here. Uh, and I see that one pin of it is hooked up over to 5 volts. And so I'm going to model that here uh, on my schematic. So I'm going to move these other components kind of out of the way. Okay, don't need these just yet. And here I can see these pins, and I can see there's a 5 volt over here. So if I come up over to my wiring tool, I can click the wire button, and I can go from 5 volts over to pin number 1. And that makes a nice strong connection between those two. Okay, let's keep looking. I notice that on the other side over here in the corner, I have another wire that's going to go from that edge all the way up around to D3. Okay. So I can come around, again, just like over here, come all the way around and up over, and I can see that little circle lets me make a connection to D3. Okay, that's looking pretty good so far. Let's keep kind of tracking. I also notice that this pin connects over to a 10K resistor. So let me come over here, and now I can introduce my 10K. Okay, I can move it here, and I can make a connection between it and 10k resistor. So now there's a strong connection between them. If I come over to the other side of that 10k resistor, I notice if I come down there's a black wire that's coming on over and it's connecting to the ground of the Arduino. So let's make that happen. Okay, 
I've got a couple different grounds that I could choose from. Um, I'm going to choose this one that's just right over here for simplicity's sakes. And so now I have my button, 10k resistor, hooked up to my Arduino. Okay, let's take a look over at this red LED. Okay, now I've noticed that there's a red LED and it's got this kind of this little crook in here. This is the positive side and then on the other side I've got the negative. Okay, so let's look at where the positive side goes. It looks like it comes down into this green wire and gets hooked up over to D2 on the Arduino. So it turns out over here, the positive side of this uh, is actually uh, this side. The side with the line is the negative side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring it over here perhaps. Okay, and I'm gonna go up to my wire tool. And sometimes I hit W just as a shortcut key. And I'm gonna bring it all the way around and up over here to D2. So the positive side is now hooked up to D2. Okay, now let's look where that negative pin goes. So this is the negative side here. We can see it kind of actually runs down this column, hooks up to a 330 ohm resistor. Okay, well let's grab this guy. And I'm going to connect those together. And let's see where the, this other side of the 330 ohm resistor goes. It looks like if I trace it down, I can run across this black wire. And I notice that it gets hooked up in the same column as my ground connection. So that's convenient because I have one of those laying around. Uh, and so what I can do is I'm going to come up and over. And I could go back to this ground connection if I wanted to. Um, I'm going to go all the way around and hook up to this ground connection. Either would work. I just did this one just to demonstrate that you could. Okay, so I'm going to save. I haven't saved for a little while, so I'm going to save. And now we have a completed circuit diagram. So we can hand this off to any an engineering firm and they would understand all the connections that we wanted to, be made, wanted to, to make. However, uh, we want to design our own PCB. So at this point, we need to make sure that we've saved our file. Uh, and if we go up to design, we can go to convert schematic to PCB. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, it'll say so there's some unfinished nets, and that just means that there's some pins that we didn't hook up, and that's okay, that's intentional. So let's say no, keep going. All right, now at this point, we wanna make sure that we've got a couple of different things figured out. So we can go ahead and click this X for now. Okay, over here, we're gonna change our units to millimeters. Uh, and I like to change my grid size to 10 millimeters just to kind of give myself a little bit better space to work in. Okay. So at this point, I can kind of zoom out a little bit and I can see all my components here um, kind of nicely laid out. And this pink square here, or rather rectangle, uh, is our printed circuit board. It's kind of picked a size for us, and this is okay. This should be big enough to put all of our components on. So I'm going to begin to bring my components onto the printed circuit board. And I can see these little blue lines that are kind of, you know, kind of dragging in every which way. Uh, and I want to be thoughtful about these because these are connections that ultimately I'll need to make with little copper traces. So I'm going to kind of bring them over here and just kind of see how things begin to fit. Now I know that some of these components kind of belong with each other. Okay, so I'm going to grab this resistor. I'm gonna grab this little LED. Looks like it wants to be on that side. Looks like I've got a lot of things that are actually connected over on this side. So I'm gonna bring this guy over. And so part of this process is just kind of figuring out where everything is gonna fit on the board and trying to untangle some of these wires as best as we can. They won't all untangle and that's okay. We'll talk about what to do with that. Now, if you want to ever rotate a part, so this I can think I could rotate a little bit. I can just select the part with my cursor and hit R and then it will rotate it around a little bit. And that can be convenient sometimes. So maybe I kind of bring things around like this. Okay, I can see these wires are kind of crossed here, so I'm gonna rotate my LED. Okay, there we go. It looks like I've got some parts kind of roughly laid out where I want them to be. Again, still a couple things that are crossed over, but I'll show you how to work around that in just a moment. At this point then, we wanna start making some permanent connections. These blue lines are just temporary guidelines that help us kind of see where things need to be connected, but they're not really connected on our circuit board just yet. To do that, we're gonna come up here to our little track tool, so, and we'll begin to make little connections here. So I saw a blue wire going from there to there. 
So now I'm going to turn that into a real wire by clicking on this one and bringing it all over here. Okay, I notice here that also I can kind of come over here. Now at some point you can see it won't let me run through certain parts of the board, uh, and that's kind of keeping me from be making a mistake. And so if you find that it's not letting you make a connection, there's a good chance you're trying to run through a part of the board that you're not allowed to. Okay, so I've made a connection over there. Oh, looks like I've got a connection here, and I'd really love to come over here to 5 volts, but I keep running into all these pins, and that's not a problem. That just means I'm going to have to go around. Now, I do like to try to avoid 90-degree angles. It's just a good design feature, and so I brought that one all the way around over here to 5 volts. Looks like I've got another few connections that I can make. I'm going to make this connection over with my LED here, and here. And it looks like I can make one here. And you'll notice here that I've got this one last resistor that I'd really love to bring over. It looks like it's running into lots of things. It's running into this wire here. Um, and I could go all the way around if I wanted to, but I'm going to hit escape and show you guys a really cool trick. It turns out that we can put these wires not just on the top of the board like we have been doing, but if I come over here and I click on the bottom layer and I hit my wire tool, um, it turns out I can work on the bottom side of the board as well. And so I can actually kind of shortcut my way across some of these wires that I wouldn't have been able to pass otherwise. Okay, and so there we go. There's our nice little printed circuit board. Um, and I'm going to top it off. I'm going to hit this little text tool. Uh, I'm going to go to the top silk layer. So this is ink that would be printed on top. And I'm going to put the name of my board on here. Hello world. So now at this point, there's one more thing I want to see. Now I want to see my circuit in three dimensions. So I'm going to hit this little 3D button. And here, you can see the printed circuit board that we would be able to manufacture. And this is pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we would take a screenshot here of this view, a screenshot of this view, and a screenshot of this view. And we would save that and submit it as part of our documentation. Now this was the guided part. There is one more part that I want you guys to do, and that's if you scroll down, I'm going to have you build your own circuit board um, using the steps that we just did, uh, and I've included some part numbers here. So as part of this lab, you'll submit a photo of your keychain, you'll submit the documentation from this little guided tour that we've done, and then you'll submit another um, set of uh, documentation from designing your own circuit board using the schematic that I've laid out here. And that's it.